You're listening to the most electrifying show in media. A neighbor's choice. I'm your host, your neighbor David Gronoski. So glad to be back with you live for another journey through the news and headlines of our time, guided by personhood principles, not the toxic group think we get from the left versus right, that nonsense from the corporate party, a one-party machine out of D.C. They've done nothing but squander our wealth, chasing boogeymen around the world uh, for a few select special interests. Joining me now to talk about what she hopes to accomplish if elected to the U.S. Congress is Anna Paulina Luna. How you doing? Hey, sir. Very glad to be back. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, and it's great having you back on. Of course, our uh, WHBO broadcast uh, signal is kind of at the heart of where your district lies in the Tampa Bay area, and so we're following your race with great interest, particularly because you've pushed <laughs> back against some of the rhino establishment that has been for too long holding back uh, the interests of their own constituents. So I wanted to ask you, first of all, this breaking news to get your take on this, that an ex-ABC executive is going to be producing the uh, January 6th primetime hearing. ABC News executive James Goldston. So I guess they're really embracing their TV party uh, aesthetic, aren't they? They're going to have to produce this like a Hollywood film. I mean, you know, it's really unfortunate and disgusting is that so many people are still trusting the media after the last four years where it's been proven that they've really turned their back on true journalism and the American people. And unfortunately, what we're finding is that the media, along with Hollywood and the Democrat Party, are all working together to basically, I think, undermine the Constitution and really hide the truth from the American people. So it's going to be increasingly important that whether you are running for local office, whether you are running for federal office, regardless of your position, if you have a platform, that you're putting those facts and those truths out there. Because to be honest with you, Uh, What we saw, especially after the Biden administration was trying to push literally a um, a ministry of truth, if you will, that they're not going to tell the American people the facts about what happened on January 6th. And frankly, there's this gross double standard that exists within the Justice Department for people that were at January 6th versus people that literally destroyed and killed people at BLM riots. So um, I will continue to stand by the American people and their right to do their right for due process. Elon Musk was uh, making news over the weekend because he was talking about how come the DOJ likes to leak everything, but nobody has bothered to list the leak of all those powerful crimes <laughs> that were hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. So I saw you, that, the, the Galeen Maxwell trial. You didn't hear a peep about that. Right, and it, and it makes and it just reminds me when I thought about that and then, you, and then thinking about the January 6th, uh, uh, people who are still detained in deplorable conditions Contrast that with what Epstein got away with, where he had a part-time hotel stay, where he had access to his assistants and everything while he was in this little six-month, very nice, uh, uh, five-star part-time jail experience for his uh, uh, previous arrest. Remember that? Yeah, it's um, it's pretty pretty disgusting. Again, looking back at the role that the media played on that, we know that there was a massive media corporation that actually knew about this, was investigating, and the journalist was actually shut down when she wanted to actually report on that. And this is years prior, so we're seeing that. Unfortunately, we're in a day and age that where if you control the media, if you control social media, especially that the truth is not going to get to the American people unless we work overtime. And frankly, that's why I'm really glad to be on your show because I know that you are okay and you're comfortable talking about a lot of things that most uh, media outlets would not want to cover. So thank you for all that you're doing. But, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Right, yeah. and I think it was ABC, wasn't it, that the anchor mm-hmm. said uh, they weren't allowed to talk about it because it, the, the, yeah. the – and so there that would be nice and fitting that the Democrats are going to use their uh, – James Goldston, the uh, he served as president of ABC News from 2014 to 2021. I wonder if he uh, can help really uh, uh, present the truth as you suggested there. I don't think so. Uh, it, I, I don't you know, think so either. 
You know, they keep bringing up this January 6th thing. Meanwhile, people all around us are really suffering. It's a massive, massive attack on the poor and the middle class, what's happening in our economy right now with inflation. And these fools in D.C., they have no interest in giving any serious remedies to inflation. Could you talk about it a little bit and maybe what you would like to do to help stop this massive attack on our wealth that's taking place yeah. every day? Absolutely. First and foremost, um, you know, I, I want to point out that a lot of people that have been in D.C. for, you know, we're talking about sometimes 20, 30, 40 years. I do believe that they've almost, in a sense, become removed from normal people from what typical Americans are experiencing and going through. And you are exactly right. They're using January 6th as a distraction from what's really happening under this administration with the economy. And the fact is, is that even after COVID-19 was deemed no longer a pandemic, even after the United States reopened, literally, and we're talking about within weeks of, of the election, that all of a sudden you didn't need to wear masks anymore and things, quote unquote, returned to normal. Um, what we found is that the federal government, the Biden administration and the Democrats actually were still pushing for more money, um, basically to, quote unquote, stimulate the economy, even though we know that we didn't need it. We just needed to let people go back to work and reopen the economy. And as a result, of that, they were actually warned, if you continue to push this massive spending, you are going to see inflation take place. And then what they did was they gaslit America and essentially went on television and said that it's not our fault, it was quote-unquote Donald Trump's fault, even though we know that that's completely false. And the fact is, is that this administration, in addition to hindering us from a military perspective, is really pushing America to be dependent on other countries for our energy production. And that simply doesn't need to happen. So one of the first things I would like to uh, work on is bringing the United States back to America first energy independence and abundance, meaning that we need to be pursuing all forms possible in order for us to really, one, lower the cost to include gas and transportation, but also to lower fuel costs. Um, and food, uh, no, excuse me, food costs as well. And in addition to that, I would like to work on ending frivolous spending. So we're seeing that as of right now, there's a ton of subsidies that are going out that are unnecessary. If we don't cut back on the spending, it's only going to continue to get worse. But frankly, um, you know, we are in the middle of a recession. A lot of people are saying that we're not quite there yet. I believe that we are. And so when I actually spoke with President Trump back in December, when um, we had actually had dinner at one of my fundraisers, he had actually said, he goes, you know, Anna, the only way out of this is uh, seriously by American energy independence. And so I hope to champion that issue. And frankly, um, I don't mean to rant over here, but I know that they're going to try to hit me saying that, you know, I don't care about the environment. I do care about the environment. I don't just but I don't believe in destroying the economy in the process. Right. And, you know, uh, the government is the biggest polluter in the world. And as long as it has as much spending as it does, it's going to continue to uh, really hammer the environment on a lot of levels. Well, We're going to uh, pick up when we where we left off here, get more into what we can do to fight inflation, because that's something that is affecting us uh, every day. People here in the real world, across Florida, across the globe who are listening live online. We'll return in just a moment with Anna Polina Luna, our guest, as she's running for U.S. Congress and wants to uh, shake up the establishment. More on the other side. Choice Radio. I'm David Gronoski. We are live on FM and AM and as our website at neighborschoice.com where you can listen live around the world. And we're joined with our guest, Anna Polina Luna, who's running for U.S. Congress here in the Bay Area. And she's challenging a lot of the establishment, including a lot of what we have seen with foreign policy, with the neocons hijacking our foreign policy and introducing microwave Trotskyite type policies. Uh, I saw this uh, uh, meme going around online, Anna, that said the Ukrainians are selling Javelin missiles on the dark web for $30,000 a piece. In case you were wondering where much of that $40 billion will go, I guess it's being uh, a little bit of a profiteering deal going on in Ukraine. Meanwhile, we're giving that $40 billion 
and people can't afford to go to work. They can't afford to get groceries. It's a total tax on their on their livelihood. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the most disturbing things that I found is that, you know, we're talking about the United States right now, we're being hit from all angles, right? We have an administration that really is, I genuinely believe that they don't have an invested interest in protecting the American people. And they are pushing a pro-China um, approach to what's happening in the grand scheme of things in our global approach, right? So we're seeing that the United States has been put into a position where much of the pro-war establishment is advocating for literally direct intervention with Russia, which I could not for the life of me ever understand. I will continue to say that I am absolutely against a no-fly zone and, and, and that altogether. But in addition to that, you have the U.S. people that are literally suffering. Like It's, it's I think, $6 for a carton of eggs now. I mean, it is insane the amount of inflation that we've seen even just take place over the last year or so. And the fact is, is that while they are spending more money, they're spending more of your tax dollars in Washington, D.C., their solution for dealing with inflation is simply to raise taxes is what they say. Well, we're the ones that are paying the taxes. They don't have to worry about their jobs. They don't have to worry about job security. They, they don't, a lot of the times these people have to worry about paying rent. And the fact is, is, is that's exactly why I'm running. I'm a normal person. I got sick and tired of the nonsense. And frankly, part of the problem is this good old boy system that exists in Washington, D.C. And I'm anything but that. So pending that I have your vote and your support, what I will be doing is what I say is bringing common sense back to Washington, D.C. I do believe that we have to stop this frivolous spending, that we cannot play world police, that we need to start putting our country first and get back to American energy independence and production. And the thing is, we're not just a world policeman. We're a crooked cop. You know, we go around and make excuses for Saudi Arabia. We look the other way as they do all kinds of terrible stuff and arm them to, to the teeth. And then we go after other countries in Syria where we're linking side by side with Al Qaeda and terrorists and they're blowing up churches and we're go along with that side of the conflict. I mean, what a crooked cop, you know, I mean, it's one thing to, to try to like be a world's policeman and actually have like principles, but we are very crooked in the way we police the world, I would say. Well, and if I, if I can also add in there, you know, as a reminder for those listening, Ukraine is not a member of NATO. So, they, you know, it's important to note because you basically don't buy insurance and auto insurance after you get in an accident, and that's basically what they're trying to do. So, you know, it's obviously terrible what Russia is doing. However, that's not our problem right now. Our problem is basically ensuring that, one, we have secure elections, that people can put food on their table. And frankly, we have a huge problem. I'll continue to advocate for this. We have to make sure that our border is secure right now. There are millions of people coming into this country unvetted, unchecked, and frankly, the Democrat Party is literally trying to gain access into these people's lives to create generational voters just like they did with the black community. They are trying to do that with the Hispanic community. And frankly, candidates like myself, we're sick and tired of it. We don't want to be exploited by the Democrat Party. Hispanics are not all, you know, inherently Democrat. And frankly, it's going to take a lot of us speaking up, speaking out, putting the truth out there to show the American people that, look, we are united. Um, the Democrat Party likes to divide us based on race, but we love this country and we're not going to let them destroy it anymore. Now, Anna, you, you say they're for this open borders, but I've seen these new stories coming out increasingly that the Hispanic community is moving more and more to a conservative direction. So I don't know how long mm -hmm. they're going to allow that border to be open if that trend continues. I think... If they if they get another election, like in this midterm, and Hispanics continue to trend in a very, very conservative way, I think you might find that that border might be sealed quicker than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> well, you know what was interesting is I actually allowed MSNBC to come down here and film our campaign. And a lot of people said, why on earth would you allow MSNBC to do that? And the, if you guys have time, check it out. It's called Field Report by Paola Ramos. And they basically wanted to see what the anomaly was for the shift of the Hispanic voting bloc that typically used to be Democrat to the Republican Party platform. And so I went and debated the MSNBC reporter on these issues of open borders, on what happened with the election. And frankly, you are right. Those that have come here legally, those that understand what the American dream is, we are absolutely fighting for the conservative 
uh, platform, and we are Republicans, and Hispanics are inherently conservative. But what the Democrat Party tried to do and what backfired is they were trying to exploit the Hispanic demographic on the open border policies, not realizing that when Hispanics found out about child trafficking, when Hispanics found out about what was happening with the people that were hurt in the process, of course we're going to vote for border security. And one of the most disturbing things that I found was that MSNBC sat there on national television debating with me and said that human trafficking, and specifically child trafficking, is not an issue at the U.S.-Mexico border, and it absolutely is. Wow. Yeah, that's horrible. They're in total denial of what's a, a terrible reality for many, many people, far too many, because of the reckless policies of looking yeah. the other way. I mean, you look at what they did in Haiti, where kids were going missing left and right after those uh, disasters that that country went through, and still there's no accountability for what goes on with that. It's totally a, a, an atrocity. They- they try to say that if you talk about human trafficking, that it's a made-up conspiracy theory. And the fact is, and this is what I, I put, actually, and I told the reporter, I said, look, the State Department does not put out conspiracy theories. You have the State Department, some of the most incredible law enforcement organizations in the country, to include Border Patrol and ICE to actually combat human trafficking on a regular basis. And what you're doing by saying that is is you're hurting the community. Of course, they edited that out. But the point is, is that, you know, they don't want the Hispanic demographic to know the truth and so what you'll find is you're going to see this massive shift with the mainstream media now talking about these issues because they're trying to hold on to the largest voting minority in the country which is the hispanic voting bloc and they're losing it and i only hope to not only represent the people of pinellas county but i also hope to use my platform to help educate and expand the republican voting base to ensure that the democrats can't lie to the hispanic americans anymore now, I want to turn to something else. One of the things that I've seen so much interest from my audience is some of the, uh, well, many of the egregious blunders and disasters for the COVID policy. And I haven't, to be honest, I have not heard a lot of people in the Republican primary season really taking these issues on. Typically, all I'll hear is something about, yeah, we need to hold uh, Fauci accountable. We'll fire him or investigate, kind of that kind of thing. What about the more specifics? I mean, for example, I'm looking at this uh, headline from uh, Public Health and Medical Professionals for Transparency uh, talking about this new Pfizer document drop on June 1st. It says Pfizer knew in May of 2021 that 35 minors' hearts had been damaged after the mRNA injection, but the FDA rolled out the EUA for teens a month later anyway, according to these Pfizer documents. Uh, Many things are happening like that. Many people feel abandoned and betrayed. There's people who have reported vaccine injuries. Other people have had an okay time with these products. But there's no, you know, anybody that reports. I remember I saw Jimmy Dore in Tampa Bay recently. He did a stand-up routine. He said, people get angry at you if you say you, because he got a vaccine injury. He said, I'd tell people that, and they'd get mad at me, and they want to unfriend me and, and hate me, people in my personal life. He said, I've never heard of that. If I If I got a a botched surgery that maimed me. People wouldn't hate me if I reported that. But with this product, there's a cult-like uh, groupthink surrounding it in any kind of reality that pokes holes at its perfect efficacy. So it, what would you do uh, to kind of fight for people who may have been rolled over by Big Pharma's influence in the COVID response? Yeah, absolutely. I To be clear, I'm actually the only candidate running for office that has publicly stated that I will not take money from pharmaceutical lobbyists. I think that that's incredibly important because what you're finding is when legislators get into office, if they're not actually fighting for the American people, you look at the money that they're taking, who they're backed by. And so I refuse to do that. You know, to be clear, I was in the military, and so I was vaccinated against a lot. But I would never force that policy onto anyone else. And I think that just like you had stated, there's many people that um, received adverse reactions to some of these vaccines. Well, also, too, there were military members that were forced out, weren't even given an option. Some were given less than honorable discharges, treated like absolute bottom of the barrel because of this policy that really violated not only people's health rights, 
but sometimes their religious rights as well. And so what I can tell you is I will continue to fight for the American people to not have mandates. I'm against mandates in all forms, especially medical ones. But also, too, I'm not taking any big pharma money. And I say that with, you know, pride, honestly, because I think that's part of the problem. But also, too, I think that until we can get a Congress back that has more people funding instead of special interest funding, this is going to continue to be a problem. And so I do know, I was actually reading some articles, and I had heard that they had sealed a lot of the findings, I think, until 2060. Um, For some of the research in regard to some of these vaccines, I'll have to verify that. But if that is correct, they're making it very hard to even now look into some of the long-term effects of this. And so I think that the American people, you know, you have a lot of these pharmaceutical companies that are protected um, from actually lawsuit. And I think that that should be repealed. I don't think that they deserve special protection. If you sell a product, you know it's hurting a product. If it was a toy, they would pull it from the market. I don't think that vaccine should be any different. Well, that's uh, good Good news because we need more people in Congress who are speaking out against Big Pharma's influence. That's something we never had in the age of McCain and Romney for nominees and the Bushes. They were completely owned 100% by Big Pharma and its influence. And these companies have long criminal records and our own government and around the world of doing a lot of malfeasance and ugliness and their rush to make a profit. So... I'm glad you're going to uh, fight for that. Anna, where can people find your campaign or get involved? Uh, yes, I hope you guys do get involved. Please head over to www.voteapl.com. That's www.voteapl.com. Please consider signing up to either do door knocking, sign waving, um, and even making a $10, $20 contribution. I'm very proud to say that of all the candidates running, that I'm the only one that's received more small dollar donations from people's Pinellas County than any other candidate, and my average donation is $10. So it does work. Please consider joining. is back. I'm your host, David Gronoski. So glad to have a moment to learn together. You can join in on the conversation by emailing me hello at a neighbor's choice.com. That's hello at a neighbor's choice.com. Uh, new podcast up right now on a, on a neighbor's choice.com. That's a neighbor's choice.com where you can see on the home page we've got a new article out you got to check that out we we don't just do radio we also do podcasts we do films we do online only video roundtables on nutrition and physics with the best we also do articles our team at neighborschoice.com has great articles you want to check out the newest by Surat Desgupta fascinating look into anthropology as always and literary analysis all kinds of things. We get the full scope of your life covered in terms of getting into the things that matter. On a neighborschoice.com, you will also find my new exclusive interview with Professor Matthias Desmet, who made news. You may have seen Joe Rogan's interview with Robert Malone, where it was the number one downloaded podcast of all time for Rogan and I believe all podcasts. I don't know where it sits now, but um, that interview uh, broke the records. And McCullough, Peter McCullough, was up there too. And both of them were talking about mass formation, psychosis, right? You've heard about this, mass formation, what happens when a society becomes drunk on groupthink, loses its mind, when it abandons the true transcendence and relationship to God and nature and reality and starts to become unhinged into snowball contagions of groupthink that possess people's hearts, souls, and bodies almost, in some ways, complete. 
And so you'll want to check out my exclusive interview with Professor Matthias Desmond, who is the guy who basically coined that tor- term of mass formation that Robert Malone and Peter McCullough and Joe Rogan broke the internet putting out there. Well, leave it to a neighbor's choice. We go and do a deeper dive with Professor Desmond than anybody else he's interacted with, where we take anthropology that I've worked on and researched and interact that with Professor Desmond's psychological work for a really harmonious and and penetrating conversation as to what's going on and how to get people to wake up from the spell of groupthink because it is something that is based on a common enemy. And it's a delusion, a shared delusion that truly feels true and real. And when you are caught up in a true crowd delusion, you truly believe that the target of your wrath is truly guilty and deserving of all hell and pain and suffering that they allot to it. It is very hard to get people to snap out of it. That's why I'm trying to tell you, you can't reason through people. This is a religious thing. This is a religious ecstatic experience that people experience when they become a part of a tribal mindset. That's why I talk about tribalism so much. It's not just some little intellectual curiosity. No, it is the groundwork for your ability to survive through these chaotic times is to understand how mimetic groupthink works. As Professor Desmond identifies one aspect of it with his work on mass formation. You can find that interview right now at a neighborschoice.com. Go there now and check that out. Subscribe to our email there so you can get our weekly update of our content highlights. You can also subscribe to our podcast wherever you get podcasts. Search for David Gronoski and you can subscribe. And I really appreciate you guys who write good these nice reviews are just wonderful because they're thoughtful. And I can't tell you how many people, not just reviews, but whenever there's a public event where there's something going on and I'm and I'm attending it that's related to, uh, you know, issues related to the show, and people come up and say how nice that, you know, the show has changed their life. And people, are, we want to share these stories with people so that millions of people can be a part of of benefiting from these conversations that we have on this show together, our audience, as well as those who we invite on the show. It's important that we build each other up. And that's what I try to do with this program is to equip you with knowledge and and give you real world reasons for uh, positivity. I'm looking at some of these reviews now from Apple Podcasts, where you might be listening to the show. PAM says, thank you, David, the best podcast going. I'm lucky to have found it and grateful for the perspective it's brought me. I recommend starting at Things Hidden Episode 1, Godspeed. So that's a great review. Thank you for sharing that and sharing that with other people. Karina, another five-star review. Unlike anything else, she says. She said, I heard about David Gronoski from Tom Woods. She checked it out. She said at first she had an amusement. What the heck is this? She said, but something made me stick with it through a few episodes, and now I'm hooked. This podcast is wide-ranging and impossible to categorize. It delves into religion, philosophy, medicine, science, nutrition, literature, popular culture, and politics. David is from a libertarian conservative background but refuses to demonize the left. He seems to take his Christian faith very seriously and believes we're all children of God. So these are nice thoughts, and thank you, Karina, for sending those reviews because this helps new people discover the unique thing that we do here together, right? A grassroots effort, grassroots supported, and thank you for all the great people who support us monetarily at neighborschoice.com as well. I want to look at this story. It says, Kuwait summons top U.S. diplomat over gay pride propaganda. The U.S. Embassy in Kuwait tweeted out that all human beings should be treated with respect and dignity and should be able to live without fear no matter who they are or whom they love. That's the quote from Joe Biden. It says, Joe Biden is a champion for the human rights of the LGBTQI persons. Hashtag Pride 2022, hashtag you are included, and it's got a picture of the Pride Month flag and everything. 
Now, this was posted, and it got a lot of outrage from the the Kuwaitis, right? Um, they were outraged because they said that, you know, that doesn't reflect their cultural values, right? This is the flag that was created from, you know, the West, right? And it has an ideology, a very political ideology. You know, people who are publicly... Uh, out as gay like Peter Thiel are completely viciously uh, purged from that flags group so it's not just about being a member uh, in terms of sexual orientation it has a political connotation to that flag as well so why in the world if we're supposed to be a multicultural government why is our multicultural government imposing its ethnocentric Western chauvinistic perspective onto people who do not have the real power to say, take a hike and get out of our region. Because we see what happens when people like Libya do that, people like Syria do that, people like Iraq, Afghanistan. Well, they, they got away with it, I guess. But typically, if you are a, a smaller country and you are in a country that has values that are opposed to the D.C. elitists, the smug elitist bigots in D.C. who want to impose their worldview by force. You don't have a right to say anything back. You can't talk back. You are an imperially imposed upon society in Kuwait. It says the ministry, the Kuwaiti foreign ministry summoned the uh, James Holtzneider on Thursday over social media references and tweets supporting homosexuality, the ministry said that he received a memo confirming Kuwait's rejection of what was published and stressing the need for the embassy to respect the laws and regulations in force in Kuwait. Kuwaitis reacted on social media to the embassy's post with outrage, suggesting the pro-gay message was in conflict with the Muslim beliefs of the majority of the people. But that's no mine, you see. If you are not going to, so our empire from D.C. says we will use our power, our violent, flesh-ripping-apart power to impose our narrow, ever-changing view on the entire globe. And if you disagree, we will bring violent wrath against your people. Just look at what's happening in Ukraine, the people of Ukraine are suffering because the D.C. imperialist elites, the lawless anarchists in the bureaucracy over there, who've got a slush flood of money laundering scams going on to predate the Ukrainian people, they want to make a statement that if you do not submit 100% to that flag's political implications... And if you do not impose that 100% ever-changing values, you impose it on your people, that government, that empire will come out to economically starve your people, drop bombs on your people, and terrorize you into submission. How's that for pride in a nation using its power to subjugate people who disagree with their particular worldview? Repulsive is what that is. Back after this. Remember, the globalist people hate 
the idea of people having joy, having families, having boundaries, having savings, deferring gratification for long-term cultivation of people around you and your grandkids and great-grandkids having a better future than you. They don't like that stuff. They like to consolidate power into their hands. And so they've been pushing the can down the road, down the road, down the road about the reckoning coming for all of the lawless spending that they've been doing using the U.S. financial system to get obscene amounts of wealth redistributed to themselves while holding humanity back. That's why we're still using outdated technology. We could be having ocean water power our cars and cities, but instead We've got oligarchic cartels running our country into the ground and confiscating your labor. You spend half of every year just about, if not more, paying for local, state, federal taxes and inflation. Now it's probably 60%. Every day you spend, if you want to count it by day, you can say half the day of your working day or just count it by the calendar. You have to work until what, June or July? This entire year from January till next month, you would have had to work the average person just to pay for the local, state, federal taxes and inflation. Yeah, that's nice and convenient, isn't it, the way they hide that bill for you? All these little taxes and things here and there, inflation, the price of things going up. Oh, it's just greedy corporations. How'd you learn that? Oh, from the government school that taught me that. Oh, that's real convenient, isn't it? Real convenient. They don't tell you those corporations are greedy because they get corporate welfare from the very government that's debasing your purchasing power by flooding the market with new money chasing after the same relative amount of goods. Now, you don't learn that in high school. You don't learn that in college. But it's something that is true no matter whether you learn it from your government or not. And so that's why we have to push back on all this misinformation that they continue to sow and use their uh, you know, rhetoric against themselves. You know, one of the things that I've always said is that the left and the establishment globalists, they hate the body. They hate human bodies. They cannot stand the way God made us. They can't stand it. And so they are, they love to worship desire. But if we understand anthropology, we know that the desires of our heart don't come from us. They come from outside of us. We catch desires. We want to keep up with the Joneses. We want to imitate others. We want to compete with others. And people around us, their role modeling is what influences what we want. That's totally anathema to the left. It likes to make sure that you always are enslaved to the supposed desires that supposedly came from your heart. In reality, they didn't. They're a product of people around you. As someone online named David M. said, maybe the most revealing part of What is a Woman, which is the new documentary by Matt Walsh at the Daily Wire, maybe the most revealing part is when Matt Walsh correctly points out to the creepy gender pediatrician that Lepron is the same drug used to chemically castrate sex offenders. She shuts down and accuses him of using hurtful language. That is the moral universe of gender ideology, extreme sensitivity to language, extreme recklessness with people's bodies. The word castration is offensive. Actual castration of children is wholesome and good. And he points out something that I've been talking about for some time. Another commenter said, one of the emerging issues with puberty suppression of these children is that since they don't develop normal genitalia for their birth gender, the bottom surgery when they are adults is much more difficult and they are inorgasmic for life. I mean, this is disgusting stuff that's being done to people who don't, they're too little to know the difference and they're being shoved off of a cliff. Just put it mildly in terms of their life. Doing things that you learn and people think, it's my true gender to be a cat. There's stupid people that think it's okay to be a cat right now, okay? Okay. Now, I don't want to say stupid. we got to be nice. But that's mentally insane, okay? Let's just put it what it is. This is people have lost their mind in mass. They've lost their mind together. This isn't new. People have lost their mind for tulip mania. They've had hysterias and manias all the time. Societies knew this. That's why they, they always put in the, ba- in the past before Christianity certain protections against signs of undifferentiation to 
kind of keep that kind of chaotic losing oneself contained. But we're, we're in a state where we've now sacralized chaos. We have consecrated chaos. We've consecrated undifferentiation because people want to be completely consumed and owned by the desires that have been implanted to them by those around them. And the TV and people who, think about how useful that is for people who are Malthusians who hate the idea of human population continuing to grow. They've convinced a whole generation of people that because of their actions, the planet's going to blow up any minute now. It should have been blown up like, what, 10 years ago because of climate change? These dumb Luddites, they don't know. They don't just go with one hysteria gimmick after the other. They see a TV ad and emotionally manipulates them, and bam, they're on to the new hysteria. And then, remember 10 years ago, nobody was talking about, I identify as a cat. I identify as this or that. It's because this is something that had been cooking up in academia. Nobody cared about it. It was in the fringes of society, in, in academic fringes, postmodern theory, right? A lot of these people got their backing from uh, intelligence groups and the original origins of these things. Go look this stuff up. So next time you think you've found your true sense of self because you identify as a cat and you need a litter box for your college class, maybe, just maybe, while you're sitting in that litter box, meowing away, thinking you found your true self, maybe just Google the CIA origins behind some of the thinkers that got you in the damn litter box, okay? How about do that next time before you utterly wreck yourself and everybody else around you because that's the real issue here the whole idea about you must accept that me identifying as a cat is normal or else i will blow up the world until you do that is the madness of this age that will be defeated by its own overreach we don't compete with it we let the crazy fall in on its own self okay when people are power mad and they're fighting against god when they're fighting against nature, you don't try to compete with it. That only gives it more life. You let it fall on its own weight. Okay? So these people, the only thing we're going to have to really push back with is you're not going to mess with kids. You're going to get the hell away from kids. You're not pushing your dumb French postmodern psychopath experimentation with people's bodies and hormones that can cause cancer. We've talked about all these hormonal things that are happening with seed oils. What are you doing when you're putting these drugs that chemically castrate into children? But these people care more about words than they do the reality of the body. Jesus Christ saves the body and the soul. These people hate the body. They want to denigrate the body. They want to crucify the body for the God of their illusory desires. And that's very convenient for globalists that want to convince people to stop breeding, to stop having joy, to stop having real life, to spend your entire life on the internet, watching Netflix, playing video games, never accomplishing anything but being a useless consumer, a mindless consumer. That's what globalists want because they hate God. They want to be God. They hate God. They want to be God. They tell you there is no God, but they hate him. That lets you know they protest too much. The tell is that they want to be God. They're jealous of God. They'll never be God. Jesus is king. They've been defeated the moment they start to rebel against the gospel revelation that Jesus Christ stands for every child who is being hurt right now. Every child who is being confused right now. Every child who's being put in a sex bar with disgusting, foolish adults to introduce them to a life of misery, that contagious misery. Jesus stands in solidarity with their, these children, and no stupid fly-by-night little fad ideology from a dying empire will touch the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven will inherit the earth, and the dying grasp of a failed ideology a failed empire with a body count, too many to count, of trying to impose its revolutionary revolt against nature around the globe by force would just be another, just another thing in the wind blowing away, dust in the wind, because Jesus is king. DC's not, Hollywood's not, these losers lost.
They haven't got the memo yet. And we are going to ignore their stupid, clownish ways. We're going to protect the innocent. And we're going to build a civilization that will be so much better than anything they could ever dream of. I'm David Gronoski. Godspeed. Fine show in media. A neighbor's choice. I'm your host, your neighbor, David Gronoski. So glad to be with you again for hour two of our live broadcast. You know, you're not supposed to be excited and passionate in this time. You're supposed to be too cool for school. You're supposed to act like Hello, this is my show. I am so busy tweeting as I do the show, I don't have time to show any effort. That's stupid. That's called mimetic parroting. That's dumb. It's low energy. It's weak. And it would do nothing to change civilization. We got to speak from the heart. And I try to do that for you every time we have a live broadcast, rain or shine. And yes, there's a lot of rain today here where we are in Central Florida. Hope you're doing well wherever you're at, staying safe, staying away from these ridiculous gas prices. Look, when my job's done, we'll have our nice cold fusion power cars and cities. Hopefully, we'll have our elemental transmutation for our rare earth minerals so we won't be fighting over wars of all this uh, conflict, diamonds and conflict uh cobalt and conflict, tungsten and conflict, this or that, all this disgusting stuff. The CIA makes a living keeping us fighting everybody over. You know, we're just going to get past all this stuff. But in the meantime, we're going to have to navigate things, be smart, be wise, and navigate this culture with love in our hearts, nonviolence. Everything really has to come from that worldview center. If you don't have the center, you're going to be falling prey to any dumb gimmick they can come up with. I'm hearing that Elon Musk may not make it through his purchase with Twitter. This turns out, and it, it makes sense. You know, Twitter, he's saying, you know, it could be a scam that massive amounts of what they say are real, um, are real uh, 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 accounts are fake, right? And it makes sense. Like, think about it. You know how much this lying media, I mean, look, they're using an ABC news exec, an ABC TV producer to produce a hearing. I mean, what do you need to produce? Pro- production? What do you need? A smoke machine? You need a hologram of the of the queen waving in the January sixth committee or something? What the heck are they talking about? These stupid low info clowns that buy into this stuff. I just can't believe it. It's breathtaking the stupidity, the idiocy that these people are uh, and, and raptured by. Uh, but Elon Musk has put, pointed out indications that, you know, until he can find out whether this site of Twitter.com is fraudulent, you know, in the amount of fake accounts, he's not necessarily going to go through with the buy. So I created a Twitter account when I heard that he had made the deal, right? Just to experiment. I have been, you know, people have been telling me since I remember 2008, get on Twitter, David. You know, you need to get on Twitter. Your thoughts need to, you'd be great for this medium. And I never did. I didn't like it. I don't, I still don't care for it. But I figured, um, why not give it a shot if the new ownership is successful in taking place? And if he's successful in creating a free speech platform, if you're going to have, I mean, I'm banned off of YouTube, even though you might be able to find some of my videos on there. Check it out and see on YouTube. But we were banned off of YouTube. The book burner fascists hated us because we were exploring how to solve cancer without making Big Pharma rich. And they hate that kind of stuff. They're book burner fascists, the punks at YouTube, little Google CIA trash site they are. But anyways, they banned us off of that. So we said, you know, Facebook's got us completely, um, you know, shadow banned. And they're a horrible organization of losers and hateful bigots. So we think, okay, what are we going to do, you know? So I said, let's try it. We, we're on the alternative platforms, but a lot of that's talking to... Like my show goes beyond, you know, the conservative stuff. We do all kinds of stuff, right? We're talking about new physics. 
new nutrition paradigms. You know, we got a whole conversation to happen. I'd like to talk to not the echo chamber. That's why I'm doing this live radio show to reach people just like you. And and so I'm thinking, okay, we'll try this Twitter thing. But he says it's not going to maybe not going to happen. But it makes sense from the way these people manufacture stuff. They've probably got algorithms in there that create that they've created like all these millions and millions and millions of accounts, right? So they probably have some kind of algorithm that every time a real human being likes like an AOC tweet, it probably like plus 50, right? Plus 50, plus 60 likes of all these fake bot accounts that are there just to create herd mentality. See, I talked to you about mimetic theory. It's not a, this is not something I'm telling you because I want to show off some neat little theory. I'm trying to help you navigate how the world actually works because the people in power and the establishment, they may not know mimetic theory in the way Rene Girard presents it, but they functionally operate as if they do because they know that you're more likely to feel pressure to conform. I'm saying you as in the general you, not you specifically. I'm sure you wouldn't, but the, the you that we, uh, you know, encounter in our daily life is more likely to, you know, feel pressure to conform or be silenced in the face of a tweet that's got a hundred thousand likes from an AOC saying, silence, if you are silenced in your desire to not hand over guns immediately and confiscate, you are probably, you are accused of killing, you know, people and stuff, you know, this kind of stuff. And you see 500,000 people like it. Meanwhile, Rand Paul says, no, we shouldn't do that. And it's got, you know, 10,000 likes. They know how human beings work. They're like, okay, the crowd's way over here. I guess my team's not powerful. My team's in danger. If I'm in danger, that means I could be hurt. I could be isolated. I could be robbed of economic and social status, which is more important than economics for a lot of people. And so, therefore, people are intimidated and they shut down. So so Twitter knows that's how it works, right? I mean, how many of those Obama accounts that are following him, it's probably, what, 30% of it is real, active people, you know? Um, you know, I mean, they've, they've done studies. I'm just throwing out a number. I don't really care about the, the specifics. But if it doesn't go through, we're probably going to not spend much time. I already don't really spend much time posting on Twitter too much. I see a lot of these people in conservative and populist ink they're posting thousands of times a day. I don't know how you have time to procreate, how you have time to uh, uh, move, how you have time to look at the sun if you're posting thousands of times a day. And frankly, that's a video game app I don't want to participate in. To, to I don't think that's an effective way to actually influence culture uh, in the right way. So if Elon succeeds and he actually opens up the algorithm and he does free speech, I'm excited to really put a lot of effort as far as I, as far as my time on online into making Twitter a platform where we can share a taste of what we do on a neighbor's choice. And if it doesn't succeed, I have no real value for that trash site as I did before because I have no time to sort through these constant psyops where these people say, "Hey, uh, it's perfectly a civil right to put a five-year-old in a bar with all kinds of sexual language and sexualization and grotesque stuff for a five-year-old. And if you say that's wrong, you're denying my existence. Like, I'm not playing that stupid PSYOP game that the CIA helps because Herbert Marcuse, look at all these people. They get so much support from our intelligence groups. Where do these people get their job? But... They work in the intel groups in the past. I'm talking Herbert. Go look up Marcuse. Look at these figures. These are the figures that actually create these ideas that are useful for the establishment to just send people off into a tizzy, losing their ever-loving mind, and then going along with the latest thing that's ever put in front of their faces to the point where it's like, Hey, I'm against gun violence. Please arm Ukrainian people to the teeth with javelin missiles, blowing flesh up asunder, blowing up brains, blowing up hearts, exploding people's bodies left and right. Please keep it going, Biden. That's the only sane thing to do is to escalate the war in Ukraine. I am against guns. It's like you are a walking fool. You are walking folly, okay? You are walking Vanity Fair mental out to lunch. If that's where your brain's at, I'm sorry. It's just insane because violence is a big deal. 
And when you're that much of a walking contradiction for something as wicked as violence, you're totally out, man. You're just out of, of being a normal, sane human being. Civilization is about tamping down that violence and that bloodthirst. And when you're over there saying, yeah, I'm against guns, but yeah, let's go ahead and arm to the teeth every country that, you know, we need to keep creating violence and war profiteering from. Sorry, you're mentally out of it. We'll be back after this. Stay tuned. returns. I'm David Gronoski. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you can call in at 727-587-1040. That's 727-587-1040 if you'd like to weigh in on topics I've explored or something else you'd like to ask. You're welcome to do that. 727-587-1040. The CNN.com has a story. The Washington Post suspends reporter David Weigel over sexist retweet. They've suspended Washington Post, suspended David Weigel for one month without pay for retweeting a sexist joke. Two people familiar with the matter told CNN. This is by Oliver Darcy. He's their little uh, hall monitor that's always talking about who got in trouble with speech codes today. Um, he doesn't do anything to talk about who killed some kid for a wicked foreign policy today. He doesn't care about that. That boy does his job. He has a little hall monitor. He's going to tell people um, who got in trouble for saying something naughty today, right? That's all that these people do. These are Gnostics. Gnostics, okay? Gnostics don't care about the body. That's why they're okay with using wicked, disgusting, big pharma garbage drugs to harm kids to make a point about their disembodied transhumanist religion which is all about putting us in a metaverse and being I want to be a cat yes and somebody wants to literally make a killing crippling your life to let you do that okay they got a little metaverse gift for you they got seed oil sludge for you and they got drugs for you They've got violent protests that the government will support for you. Look at the summer of love and everything like that. It's, you know, all of it's wicked. You know, the, the, the violence that happens on the right is wicked. The violence that happens on the left. V party, the, the designated villain team. It's pro wrestling. So he, uh, I guess he says that you know, I've met him. I've met David Weigel at a few different events over the years. He's a very smart, nice guy. And he had a run-in with Trump one time. He took a photo of the um, uh, event arena that he was at and how it was not as well attended or whatever, and, and Trump put him on blast on Twitter. I remember that. And Weigel's actually a very uh, thoughtful fella. He used to cover the Ron Paul movement pretty fairly for Washington Post. Um, but it's just interesting to see how it's all about, you know, bombs and drones may break children's bones, right? But words forever hurt me. That's the mantra of the Mick Woke left, religion, of the establishment, the dying failed establishment, losers. She, so the, what did he get in charge of? Let's see, what what did he get in trouble for? He said, us, us, um, Weigel's retweet was spotlighted publicly by his colleague Felicia Sonmez, who recently had a discrimination lawsuit 
against the paper dismissed, a decision her attorney has said she plans to appeal. Son Mez sarcastically wrote on Twitter on Friday that it is, quote, fantastic to work at a news outlet where retweets like this are allowed. She attached a screen grab showing Weigel's retweet, which was of a tweet from YouTuber Cam Harless, who joked, every girl is bi, you just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual. Okay. And so that was uh, too much. Can't handle that, right? Can't handle that banned from uh, reporting, but all the reporters who lie us into wars at the Washington Post, do they ever get banned (laughs) for that kind of stuff? Do they ever have that kind of stuff happen to them? Do they ever get banned for a month without pay, is what I'm saying, or anything of the nature? How many times has the Washington Post lied us into this intervention or that intervention? How many times have they been lying about what's happening in Ukraine to continually escalate the conflict, causing more Ukrainian kids to die rather than to pressure uh, the government to act responsibly, avoid nuclear war, and bring a, a, a the conflict? By the way, I've been on Cam Harless. I saw that name. I said, I remember that. I just did a show with Cam Harless on his show, The Mad Ones, with his co-host Jessica Green. And uh, that is, uh, just did that this week. So I guess if they watch that, man, uh, David Weigel, do not watch that interview. Because if they see that in your viewing history, you're going to be banned for a lot longer than a month, sir. Okay? And David Weigel is someone who's, you know, he's left of center. But you can actually have a conversation with people. You can actually have a conversation with some of these reporters. They're not totally owned by the groupthink hive mind. But, of course, in this Gnostic religion, words, (laughs) saying a joke, is deserving of being suspended Uh, without pay, I guess, right? But if you lie about people, if you create race riots, if you cause violent damage to society, uh, Washington Post can lie all those things into reality, and they have no consequences for that. So that's that's a, a weird hypocrisy, right? It's weird... It's strange, but it is something that we have to deal with because of the Gnostic nature of the establishment. It's something that is tragic. It's something that has real-world consequences for people suffering under the economic decline of our country being looted by these Gnostic religionists. But we have to be able to call it out for what it is. It is a religious battle we're in understand what their religion imposes onto us and what they demand and expect and then to you know act accordingly to learn how to protect people from being ground down to a pulp by this gnostic religion that the west is consumed by that is creating all kinds of broken families broken bones broken communities that we don't have to put up with. We can rebuild these things. We can heal from this. But we have to understand what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with the Democrats. That is the symptom of the problem. We're not dealing with D.C. That is a symptom of the problem. We're dealing with a spiritual contention, a spiritual conflict, okay? Worldview, culture is what we're dealing with. Deep layers of culture. You can look at the surface plot of things, or you can look at the subtext. That you can look at the themes. And that's what I'm trying to get you to do every day, is to peel back the layer of the TV party, little plots, the little wrestling plots, and look at the bigger picture so that we can see clearly what was, what must be done to navigate out of the nonsense. FloridaPolitics.com has a story called Joseph 
Ladapo openly questions safety of COVID-19 vaccines. That's a heresy in the Gnostic religion of the establishment. Florida Surgeon General Joseph Ladapo on Friday made some of his strongest statements yet against receiving a COVID-19 vaccine, according to Florida Politics. He says, people will say, oh, you know, millions of people have taken these vaccines. They must be safe. Well, you can't know the answer to that when it is taboo to talk about having a reaction after vaccines. There's another vaccine that over 100 million Americans take every year, and it's the influenza vaccine. And the stream of adverse events that I've heard from people all over this country after these vaccines is nothing like the years of my life when I've been in medicine and have been administering the influenza vaccines. There is a difference, and you can't say that millions of people getting it excuses you from it. So that's good that our Florida's own Surgeon General is able, is able to raise some heretical challenges and questions to this toxic group thing that says these mRNA products haven't hurt a single person. And if you say they have, you are in big, big trouble. Thankfully, people like Joseph Latipo, Florida Surgeon General, has the courage to speak out. I hope we get more, 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 more of this time. Back after this. Headlines illustrating the religiosity of our political culture. Here's another story along that line in the Tampa Bay community, our flagship hometown base for our work here on A Neighbor's Choice. It says five Tampa Bay Rays players declined to wear LGBTQ plus logo on uniform during the Pride Night celebration. The players said it was a faith-based decision, cbssports.com says. That's a faith-based decision whether you put it on or not, but they wouldn't understand that yet, would they? They don't know that the word religion means to bind together, and uh, putting on shared symbols is nothing but if to bind a community together, is it not? (laughs) You're showing fealty to a certain cause, a symbol that has a transcendent binding agency for a community is the classic definition of a re- of religion, even if it's not the uh, pop culture understanding of religion, that doesn't define reality for us, those of us who want to know the truth. But uh, you know that is a religious conflict that's taking place. You must show that you are under. And again, it's a political movement, okay? Because there are so many folks who identify as one of the L, G, B, or T, or whatever in that coalition that's not supposed to be the monopoly for that identity. And yet, if they don't have the politics of corporate fascism, obscene profiteering for big pharma, perpetual wars, profiteering for them, profiteering and bailouts for banks, criminalization of nonviolent victimless acts, right? All that stuff is going to, you know, basically result in being excommunicated from that identity group. Even if you're a member, if you're a lesbian or you're gay or whatever, if you don't have the right politics, you are not allowed to be a part of that tribe. So it is a political, religious group. And it demands 
ever-changing holiness codes, ever-changing purity codes in terms of your language and your certain zeal, you know, social identity cues, virtue signaling, whatever. And if you don't keep up to date with that, you're in trouble. Your social status is in danger, as those players are. We're saying, I don't want to go along with that. Oh, you don't want to go along with our religion? I thought you have to go along with our religion or else you're not. What a haughty makes the work of the Jerry Falwell more majority era look passe in terms of its imposition on people, you know? Jerry Falwell never had a thing where he had a Baptist logo of the cross that everybody had to put on to play baseball in the MLB games. Right? You could say he imposed, and I think he, his politics were off, to say the least. But uh, he had not, in my opinion, a reflection of what imitating Jesus would look like politically to go along with the Iraq war and all that other stuff. But I didn't see him imposing his insignias on people in their banks and their shows just total totalizing of society that's of course because he never was anywhere close to the political power that this ideology uh, has and enjoys right so you never just remember whenever you think you're being edgy by going along with that you're being edgy with the wealthiest biggest multi-billion corporations and multi-billionaires on the face of the planet funding and enabling that to even be a thing. <laughs> but you consider edgy. You consider General Electric a giant, old as heck multinational corporation that makes money s sending bombs on kids' heads and stuff in its past. If that's what you find edgy, have at it, you know? If you think the Pentagon's edgy, <laughs> guess you're living in a TV land. You're living in a fantasy. Texas AG launches investigation against Twitter for allegedly misreporting fake bot accounts. Twitter has until June 27th to respond to AG Paxton's demands. This is from foxbusiness.com. He's claiming that the company has misrepresented. I'm telling you, this is a Pandora's box that the establishment is going to do whatever they can to cover. Because I think it's one of those things where it's like you got to pay the overpriced payment that Elon initially agreed to, which once you get it, and then if he tries to impro it tries to clean out the bots, it'll drop the value of the company dramatically once it's realized how many bots are in the actual, um, you know, thing. And then they'll realize, wait a second, these box bots and fake accounts have been used to fluff up and manipulate what is considered popular and trending and what is getting the most likes. You know, putting young kids in a drag bar with all kinds of sexual language and imagery and visuals and everything gets a hundred thousand likes and that way they can psyop low info people who are going to move with the herd to say, Oh, everybody's doing it I don't want to be unpopular. I don't want to be considered hateful or outdated. I have to look how popular this is. I guess I'll send my six-month-old to that bar tomorrow too, right? That works for a lot of people. If you haven't paid attention, that works. <laughs> that kind of works. Unfortunately, you know, the crowd is a lie, and people are mostly owned by the crowd, and it's passions, and it's, delusions and its hysterias and its manias and its bigotries. And so you can see that of uh, that you're going to continue to see some pushback on getting to the bottom because I think if you were to find out what's really going on with uh, Twitter, you'd see that it's an information manipulation machine for governments to use and powerful corporations to use. Look what they did to spread that whole, um, the whole uh, uh, ivermectin is a horse dewormer. Total big tobacco style psyop, right? 
But Twitter was the engine that that thing took off with. The FDA tweeted out like a good little lap dog for the uh, big pharma establishment that only wanted their patented medicine to be allowed for the plebes to take for COVID. So they put it out, and then their little bots, all those little fake accounts and all the little fluff they do to puff up something and make it look really big, went to work. So if we were to find out the information disinformation scam machine that Twitter has been used by these giant corporations and agencies to wreck our lives and make us more miserable with all the carnage that they've unleashed around the world economically and through wars and civil liberties destruction, what would that do? I mean, it would it would blow the whole, you know, facade up. You'd, you'd expose it to be a lie machine, an accusatory lie machine. The other thing that it's used for very nicely um, is to um, to bully people, right? To dox people. There's a reason why people don't do what I do and tell the truth, right? Not only maybe they're lost in the in the lies of the day, but even if they know the truth, they have a hard time reporting the truth because they get doxed. They get exposed to danger and threats and the hate machine, right? And that's what the scapegoating machine of the crowd does. It always looks to devour somebody who has run afoul of the ever-changing purity codes. So right now, Twitter is a hate machine that's spewing hate for this or that or this or that. And the right participates in the hate too, right? But their hate is unauthorized. The hate from the left is authorized meaning it's completely approved by the power elites that run Western governments and the oligarchic corporations that parasitically hold us back from prosperity and wealth. So that whole thing is nicely, that engine of, of stuff that has been harming us for so many years really has been really powerfully run by Twitter nicely in the social media world. What I mean to say, just to clarify, is that, of course, the old legacy media outlets and old legacy lying talk radio elites, the old legacy CNN and ABC and ABC, they used to curate the narratives for the powerful very nicely. But then once the Internet started to take off like it did during that, you know, the time period leading up to Trump being able to get in, they saw how effective a free open Internet like a Twitter used to be could do it could it could allow movements that were unauthorized in terms of not benefiting the upper upper power establishment they said we can't do this anymore and so twitter began to be the focus not the original well they still do their little incestuous relationship with the washington post and the new york times these are pr firms for the state these are pr firms for the state's favored corporations and oligarchs but Twitter became a much more effective focus for the powerful, for different governments, for different agencies, for different groups when they realized, wait a second, this internet is going to supplant the original CNN and New York Times monopoly of information dispersion. So we've got to focus on consolidating that internet stuff and rigging it so that 500,000 likes show up for some stupid, idiotic, woke tweet. And it conditions people to say, my goodness, I want to be a part of the bandwagon. I want to be a part of what's cool. I want to be getting that pat on the head that I'm doing the right thing, that I'm righteous. So I'll put that little insignia on my uniform or I'll do that little ritual here, or there, everywhere because I got to fit in. We'll return live on A Neighbor's Choice. In the meantime, you can email me hello at a neighborschoice.com. When we get back... There's a breaking news story. A Clinton advisor with connections to Jeffrey Epstein found hanging dead. Back after this with more of this. Oh, my goodness. Here's 
exclusive story here in the Daily Mail, family of Bill Clinton advisor who admitted Jeffrey Epstein into White House seven times. Locked release of files detailing the death scenes after he was found hanging from a tree with a shotgun blast at a ranch 30 miles from his home. Dear God, does the Clinton crime family ever, ever stop killing people? I mean, apparently they kill everybody who looks at them wrong, who works for them. I don't know how anybody would take a job. All those little, remember those hipsters in Brooklyn working for the Clinton administ- the Clinton campaign? How the heck do they sleep at night knowing like every other person who works for this creepy freak family, this, you're looking like, looking like Skeletor over there, Bill looking like the Crip Creeper. And he's over there, and these people are constantly just the body count. Bam, bam, bam. Top Clinton. And I mean, it, it's a tragedy, though, because it's like, what does this guy know? What did he do? Did he feel like the, you know, we, we saw what Elon Musk said about how, you know, the DOJ never releases the list. Why not? They leak everything. They leak everything. They leaked the call from Trump and Zelensky because they wanted to make sure that that money laundering scam of flowing tons and tons of violent weapons to escalate conflict in the country, killing lots of Ukrainians as a as a, as a side thing. They they said, yeah, we'll leak that, but they can't leak what would be the biggest important story to give justice to all the victims. We don't even know. Epstein and Maxwell. Who did they mess with? Who is who is on their network list? The left always says Trump's a part of it. Let's see the list then, left. We know the left runs the DOJ. See, that's the thing. You know, these punks, they talk a big game. Oh, yeah, Musk. They got a photo with Maxwell and Musk. They got a photo with Trump with Epstein and and Maxwell. Okay, if that's what your thing is, then put up or shut up. Reveal the list. Let's see what you got there. Let's see what you really have in terms of who's going where and what. What, what. Why can't we have that leaked? If they've got something that shows that Musk and, and, and Trump were deeply involved with the wicked stuff that Epstein and Maxwell were doing, then let it out. I mean, that's how you know they probably don't have anything because the DOJ, I mean, they're totally political. All they do is, in, they are, I mean, every day they're arresting another former Trump official. They raid the, um, the uh, Project Veritas people for getting that diary from... Biden's daughter talking about weird stuff he was doing in showers and stuff. I mean, they they, all they do is weaponize the the bludgeon of the state on behalf of their little clique. So why can't they ever leak the story about Epstein's people? Huh? Just the things you wish. There's mysteries, huh? Will they ever be revealed? Top. But here's this terrible story: Daily Mail, top Clinton advisor. This is out today. June 6, Mark Middleton died by suicide at the age of 59 on May 7th. We're just now hearing about it, I guess. The Perry County Sheriff's Office in Arkansas confirmed. Middleton was President Bill Clinton's special advisor who admitted Jeffrey Epstein, best friend of Bill, Cl- uh, Bill Gates and Bill Clinton, to the White House seven of the last 17 times the pedophile visited. The married father of two who lived in Little Rock, Arkansas, shot himself at the Heifer Ranch in Perryville, 30 miles away from his home. DailyMail.com can now reveal Middleton's father, Larry, and his widow, Rhea, are fighting to keep photos and other illustrative content of his death sealed. Is that because they're in danger, too, if it gets out? The two filed for an injunction arguing that blocking the release of the footage would halt a proliferation of unsubstantiated conspiracy theories. Yes. The lawsuit claims the family has been harassed by outlandish, hurtful, unsupportive, and offensive online articles regarding Middleton and his death. So how do you find, how does he, I don't understand, how do you kill yourself by hanging yourself after you shoot yourself with a shotgun? How? How? You know? How did that happen? 
how in the world did that happen? How do you shoot yourself with a shotgun and then hang yourself? What happ- How in the world do you do that? How? Right? You can do the rest of the broadcast just saying that. How? Right? You're not going to hear that asked on uh, ABC tonight. ABC News wonders how. No, they're not going to talk about that. ABC is going to be selling you on the war, how inflation is just because boogeymen around the world get are trying to get you, how you need to hand over your guns, even though the cops are not protecting people every time there's a shooting. There, there, there's so many stories over and over again of that not happening the way it should, where cops would go to the line of protecting people and helping them. How, right? <laughs> Michael Malice says uh, red flag laws for voting would be a positive step in the right direction. Every Karen dope to the gills on SSRIs would immediately be removed from the rolls. And um, I I agree. I agree with that. I've said before that there, you know, if you're going to have a license, you should have a license and a background check to vote. Voting is the most deadly thing you could, the average person is capable of doing in terms of the consequences for people. I mean, it's that's what politics is. It's very vicious, nasty, and ugly, and it's getting worse because people don't want to repent of their worship of state power and turn back to God. Matt Walsh just tweeted out just now, There has this is the guy that made the new movie uh what is a woman he says there have been some explicit threats made against my life police are involved we knew it would probably come to this we're prepared for it that's what that but that kind of violence yeah you know the, the establishment just yawns about that they encourage that unfortunately too much encouraging it You know, they, they encourage dehumanizing people who don't think the way you're told to think in universities and TV and Disney. and I mean, you see it every day. It's a joke. They're a little religion. Constantly trying to mock the family. Constantly trying to pit genders against each other. Pit, pit uh, uh, kids and parents against each other pit people against each other divide and conquer divide and conquer divide and conquer that's how you keep people distracted and emotionally drained over jokes while they pillage all of us so Elon Musk says he may withdraw Twitter takeover He accuses the platform of material breach for withholding data. That's Disclosed.tv. So maybe Twitter's not going to be liberated. Maybe not. And what does that mean? What does that mean for Elon, by the way? His days of being the richest man are probably numbered in terms of he's going to be going down, down, down. I wouldn't be surprised if they say he's not allowed to go to the moon or go to Mars anymore because... In order for him to go to the Mars, he must, you know, bow the knee to their latest updated holiness codes. And uh, he does not do that on a couple key issues, like free speech and promotion of having kids. Huh. Imagine how radical of an idea that is. Well, that's where we're at. As we report in a late-stage empire in the throes of rebellion against the personhood revolution of Jesus. Nothing they're doing is progressive. It's a reactionary movement against the truly liberating and progressive movement that Jesus inaugurated in history 2,000 years ago. And we can be a part of it by repenting of worship of these false gods and false religions and loving our neighbor as ourselves rolling up our sleeves, working together in the community, getting the breath of fresh air in our lungs every day, getting that fresh air, getting that sunshine, staying away from garbage, seed oil sludge, renewing our hearts, minds, and souls with the battle for truth and love and family and community. I'm David Gronoski. Email me hello at a neighborschoice.com. Godspeed.